So today we're going to look at a quick diagnostic method you might have heard of before and that's pulse sensor diagnostics. You might have seen a waveform like this before and today we're going to have a quick introduction to what this diagnostic method can do and really break down the basics of how you can use it to diagnose engine problems. So for me this is a relatively new uh, concept of diagnostics and when I first saw it I struggled to get my head around it first. It's easy to overcomplicate the waveform and uh, misinterpret what you're seeing. So we're going to break it down into the basics today. So let's just clear one thing up. Um, this is a pulse sensor and pulse sensor diagnostics is not for measuring inside the cylinder. For that you will need something like this and this is the Ditex uh, in cylinder pressure transducer and with a tool like this you can actually measure the direct pressure inside the cylinder. However, you cannot do it with this. Um, these are for measuring very low pressure pulses in the intake and exhaust and a few other places. So if you haven't seen it already, make sure you go and check out the video where I make one of these for really very, very cheap. So here I've got a couple of sensors that uh, Steve from Marshall's Auto Diagnostics sent me. Um, you can link him down in the description and uh, he'll be able to hook you up in the UK. There's also a few links down there for guys in the US that are, are making these as well. So technician made, um, good way to support the trade. Now, what can you do with these things? They're really quite versatile and you can pick up quite a few different faults. So you use them for measuring pulses inside the intake, exhaust, uh, crankcase. You can also use it inside the cooling system. And what you're basically looking for is compression losses. And with this, you can actually identify quite accurately where that pressure loss is coming from inside the cylinder. So for example, a, a low compression, it could be a valve, a piston ring, uh, it could be a bore, it could be a head gasket. And we're gonna have a look at how you do that. So if there's anything else you think you can use these for, then let us know in the comments. So let's get on the car and take some measurements. So with these sensors, all you need to do is connect the connectors into the top of the sensor like that. Okay, so we've connected up to the injector for a uh, cylinder identification. So we know that that's cylinder one, that's quite important for analysis after. We've got the pull sensor down the intake pipe there. And the settings we've gone for on channel A we're on the times 20 because we've got an attenuator on there, so 100 volts for the injector. And we've gone for one volt on channel B for the pulse sensor. Uh, time setting is 20 milliseconds. So we can see here that we've got two injection events. So that's a full 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation between those two injection events. So let's save this one and we will analyse it after. Okay, now we'll take the measurement on the exhaust. Just put that in there. Okay, now we can see that we've got the exhaust measurement there. So let's just pause that and save. Okay, now we'll take one down the dipstick tube for crankcase measurement so this would be piston ring issues okay so we've gone quite high on that one there let's just increase the voltage a bit so we are scaled well and we'll stop that and save Okay, and finally we're going to take the one in the uh, coolant header tank. So this is a auto smoke tester uh, kind of bung. So very careful that your coolant system isn't pressurised. This engine's still pretty cold. Okay, so let's have a look what happens when we go on here. So we can see we've got some very small pulses there. Let's just um, let's reduce the voltage a bit. And save that waveform. 
Okay, so that's all the measurements taken now. Let's go and see what they mean. Okay, so let's get these waveforms up on the screen and analyze them to see how we can use them to, to find faults. Um, you can find all these waveforms in our shared library. If you hit the link in the description, tap in your email, I'll send you a link. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to download the Pressure Waveform Overlays app and you can download that from the Windows um, App Store. So if you go into the App Store and search for uh, waveform, pressure waveform overlays, it's this app here. Okay, so first of all, let's get up the uh, first one we did. So for the intake, here it is. And what we're gonna do is take a screenshot of that waveform. I'm going to copy it, go over to the pressure waveform analysis tool and paste that into there. So here it is. So now we want to open this window here and select four cylinders, synchronize to cylinder one, that's why the cylinder synchronization was so important, and the firing order of the engine. So this four cylinder engine is one, three, four, two, and then we hit go. Then what we're gonna do is align the front edge of this with the main injection. We can see two injections on that, and this diesel engine has a pilot injection and a main injection, so align it with the main injection, and then span this across to the other main injection. So what we've got then is four boxes which represent each part of the four stroke cycle and they're indicated up here by the colors. So we've got intake, compression, expansion, power, and exhaust. So here we can see we've aligned to cylinder one here, and cylinder one is red, <coughs> and we can see that that's a power stroke, and we know that because we've, we've triggered to the injection. So now we can see that these pulses here, so on every intake, we get two of these little pulses, okay? Now, Remember, it's a pull sensor, it's not a pressure sensor. And they look a little bit like this. And what they can be thought of is, is like, a, like a ping pong ball sitting on top of water. And if you push it down, it's gonna bob up and down after. And that's what we're seeing here. So what we can see here is we've got a nice repeatable pattern across all four cylinders. Now, if you were gonna have an intake valve leaking, say you had a low compression, what you're looking for is a spike that sticks out from the rest, maybe one spike. So let's say we had a, um, a leaking valve on cylinder three. What I would be looking for is on this expansion stroke or compression stroke for cylinder three would be a spike. So we can see here cylinder three is on compression here. That's a, a, a place where we could possibly get a leak from a from a faulty valve and also cylinder three is on expansion here so you know you could also look for a spike on that part of the waveform so it's much the same for the exhaust system as well so let's have a look at that so here's our exhaust waveform looks quite different again to what we saw on the intake side okay so here we've got the exhaust waveform now so let's just align align our uh, overlay we can see now that we've got these pulses in the middle of the overlay that represent those exhaust events so here the brown represents the exhaust strokes so this pulse here would be for cylinder two this pulse here would be for cylinder one this pulse three and this pulse here for cylinder four so again, if you're looking for a problem on there, what you're looking for is a spike on compression and expansion uh, strokes. So for example, if you had a leaking exhaust valve, what you were looking for is uh, an anom anomaly, a difference to all the rest, maybe a spike that's not repeatable. And then you can align that with the compression and exhaust strokes of the other cylinders to see which one is at fault.
Okay, now to my, my more favourite measurements. I think these are quite clever and quick measurements. The uh, crankcase and the expansion tank. So if we have a look at the crankcase. Okay, here we are. Paste that in there. Send it to the back. And then align our waveform. And here we can see that we've got definite pulses for each one there in the crankcase. And then if you had a fault, what you'd be looking for is a pulse, of course, much higher than the rest, aligning with the expansion or compression stroke of uh, whichever cylinder might be at fault. So there you can indicate piston ring issues and also bore wear. So now we have a look at the expansion tank, so for the coolant system. And this one we're looking at possible head gasket issues. Okay, let's get that on the overlay there. So if you remember the voltage was much lower on this one and that's what we would hope to see in the uh, cooling system. We don't want any pulses in there really. So we did up the voltage a bit to make sure that we could kind of see the pulses that we had on there. So we can see there that we have got small events relating to the combustion uh, on each cylinder. It'd be interesting to know how we got those events on there. If you know how that's got there, then you know, let us know down below. Um, but what we would really be looking for here is is kind of uh, big pronounced events. So you might have um, head gasket failure, maybe, and you would get, um, of course, a high pressure pulse for that cylinder in the expansion tank. So really like that one, really good one. I hope you found that a useful introduction to pulse sensor diagnostics. Again, you there is much more you can do with this little tool and much more analysis, much more detailed analysis that can be had. But if you break it down from the basics and start there, you should be able to start using these as a really quick way for identi identifying mechanical faults without stripping the whole engine down. Really cool method of diagnosis, I really like it.